This man was the head of Victoria's corruption watchdog for half a decade. Robert Redlick's investigations brought the dark underbelly of decision makers and those in power out of the shadows. Now he's sounding the alarm about the state of integrity. I feel that I would be failing the community if I didn't utilise the knowledge I had to draw attention to these matters. The former Supreme Court judge headed up the independent broad-based anti-corruption commission from 2017 to 2022. All serious public sector misconduct. Um, he was invited to speak at a Victorian parliamentary committee last month where he was blocked by Labor members from detailing his reforms that would strengthen the body. Those four members were not interested in exploring any of those matters. Did you ever bully anyone as the IBAC Commissioner, any of your staff? I would like to think that bullying is not any part of my personality. The Labor members included Belinda Wilson, former actor, now MP Paul Mercurio, Ryan Batchelor and Jackson Taylor. Were other ex gratia payments made to staff during your tenure as Commissioner? You'll have to ask the CEO. Was it practice when you were Commissioner to brief journalists about the contents of reports of IBAC before they were tabled in the Parliament? No. I regret to say that it was an example of members of the committee being pursuing political considerations rather than being focused on what might be done to improve integrity in this state. This appears to be the latest episode in an attack on the integrity watchdog. In March, a letter written by Robert Redlick in the final weeks of his term last year was tabled in Parliament. It outlined his concerns about the Labor government's attack on IBAC and included allegations MPs had instructed an independent consultant to dig up dirt on IBAC as evidence to support the narrative it was not performing. The Premier dismissed Robert Redlick's concerns. I'm not here to have debates with people who no longer hold a position and have apparently written a letter that I haven't even seen. Broad-based Anti-Corruption Commission Act 2011. In relation Last week, to two bills from the Greens and the Coalition to strengthen IBAC oh, yes. were voted down by the state government. Eight, yes. The result of the division is eyes 29 and noes 49. Therefore, the question is defeated. We're not in the habit of voting for things that won't work. Why won't the government back Robert Redlick's recommendations? Well, the government is engaged, as I just said, through the Attorney-General with the current heads of agencies, uh, and that's it, as, it, as it should be. We've got a massive conflict of interest where the person who's the acting IBAC commissioner is also applying to Daniel Andrews for the top job at the same time he's investigating the Premier and his government. There is an independent parliamentary committee that has a right of veto. So the notion that this is the gift of the government is just wrong. If we look at the issue that I've touched on earlier... The reforms followed up on Robert Redlick's recommendations. They included removing the requirement for IBAC to only investigate if conduct is potentially criminal. That enables conduct that's not criminal but which is improper, where decisions are made for inappropriate reason, to be part of the Integrity Commission's jurisdiction. Why don't Victorians deserve an anti-corruption commission with the same teeth as the New South Wales ICAC? Well, I don't know that um, the, the inference in your question is right. The IBAC here and our integrity agencies have more powers than they've ever had, bigger budgets than they've ever had. In 2019, the Andrews government raised the bar for public hearings. Robert Redlick says it weakened the integrity body. Why are public hearings so important? Well, they're the mechanism by which uh, the public can understand what the work of the Commission is doing and thus understand where there are failings in the way in which executive government operate. He says under the current rules, inquiries like robo-debt would most likely be held behind closed doors. Now, look, that's not my question. Are you listening at all? I am. This has got nothing to do with the question you were asked. He says it's highly likely the public grilling of former New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian would not have happened. If you were able to have your time again, would you disclose your close personal relationship with Mr Maguire to your ministerial colleagues or any of them? 
I didn't feel it was of sufficient standard or sufficient significance in order to do that. The New South Wales ICAC found her and then boyfriend Daryl Maguire had engaged in serious corrupt conduct. ICAC's not constrained by a definition that says it's got to be a crime. In the case of the former Premier in New South Wales, if that matter uh, had been an issue in Victoria, I doubt that there would have been a public hearing because the view could not have been reached that what she did constituted a crime. It was nonetheless misconduct, important that it be exposed. In contrast, Victoria's Premier has only given evidence before IBAC in private sessions. One of those was in Operation Daintree, which in April exposed how improper influence was used to award a lucrative contract to a Labor-affiliated union before the 2018 election. The Secretary of the Health Workers' Union had privileged access to the Premier and to the Premier's senior advisor within his private office, who was responsible for union issues, had privileged access to the Minister for Health's advisor, and through that privileged access was able then to make an unsolicited application to the health department to get a contract. There are no findings against uh, anyone in this uh, report. Uh, it, is, it is an educational report, and they're not my words. That's the, uh, the way in which IBAC themselves have uh, described this. It was regrettably too easy for the government of the day to say nothing to be seen here. Um, it was only an educational report, no findings. The report is a litany of findings of misconduct. Robert Redlick warns it's not just Victoria where integrity standards have deteriorated. Politicians, whatever their persuasion, are reluctant to see themselves exposed to investigation, to the identification of failings. He and other anti-corruption commissioners have identified the hollowing out and marginalisation of the public service and the rise of a shadow workforce of political advisers. The community has to understand that when the framework of executive government is as it is now, the risk for decision making not to serve the public interest is much higher than it used to be. If the conventions are ignored, if codes of conduct are not observed, then the checks and balances are not being followed and the risk becomes much greater. That the decision that's made is made for improper reasons, not because it serves the public interest. <laughs>